In the previous videos of this French Polishing Fundamental series, we talked about all types of different important aspects and materials for French polishing. In today's video, this is video number six of the series, we're gonna talk about mixing shellac. We're gonna cut through all of the confusion of one pound cut and two pound cut and all these other things. I'm gonna show you my super simple system, the formula that I like to use to make the perfect shellac for French polishing. My name is Tom Bills, and welcome to The Art of Luthery. The next thing I wanna talk about is how to mix, how to mix it, you know? So let's start with the ratios, because a lot of people are confused with that, and I, was really confused too. Two pound cut, one pound cut, and all this. It's just a confusing way to think about it. So um, I have a much better, well, I think it's better, a much simpler for me to remember um, ratio, and it's very simple. It's just three to one. Three parts alcohol to one part resin, and that's by weight, okay? So like when I'm gonna mix my shellac, I take my little scale here, and I put my, uh, here, let me move my charcuterie board of shellac. Um, so I'll take my scale, I'll put my bottle on here. Um, sometimes I'll use this kind of bottle, sometimes I'll use this. So these are the two types of glassware. Maybe I'll just segue into glassware for a second. Um, this is a four ounce bottle. Um, I'm pretty sure I linked to this in the shellac handbook. Um, this is, I think this is maybe 16 ounces or more. Um, but I linked to the newer version of this um, container also in that shellac handbook. So you should be able to link to those products if you wanna look at them. The great thing about, this is what I use for mixing a larger amount. It's just a really good sized container and everything for what I typically mix. And then it can seal on the top. Um, it also, <clears throat> when you're filtering your shellac, there's like a, a rim on this. And so I'll have a coffee filter in here <clears throat> and I'll pour my shellac in. And sometimes if it's waxy, it'll take a while and I can just sort of slide that on the top. And it just helps, helps it from being exposed to so much air during that filtering process if it takes a while. <clears throat> really great though. Also the key to maintaining your glass bottles is you wanna soak them in a solution of TSP, trisodium phosphate, which you can find at any hardware store. Um, and that's a great way to keep everything clean. So for the mixing though, instead of doing a two pound cut, worrying about all that kind of stuff, I just do three to one. Okay, so I'll just put this on here. I have <clears throat> a little funnel. If I'm gonna mix a small amount, I'll mix it right in here. I'll put one ounce of resin and then I'll put my three ounces of alcohol and it fits perfectly in this little bottle. And then you can just, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, um, I'll use the coffee grinder. So you can take your uh, <clears throat> flake shellac, put it in the coffee grinder, grind it up nice and fine. And then what I'll do is I'll pour that in here so I can add my one, um, one ounce in here of my shellac. And then I'll put my, my three ounces of uh, alcohol in there and just kind of fill it. It really just fill it up to the top essentially with this bottle and then you're gonna get your nice three to one. I call this a bench cut. Um, this is what I learned from Eugene Clark, the bench cut, this is what I use. It's, you wanna mix your shellac, don't mix it on the um, more diluted side, mix it on the more strong side because it's gonna get diluted from the process of actually doing the French polishing, you know? And you could even pour some alcohol in there if it feels like it's going on thick and you're having trouble just put a drop of alcohol in there and, and you know thin it up a little bit and see if that helps you. So you wanna be thinking that way, but you can't make it any thicker after it's made. So it's better to go with a three to one, nice strong mixture, what I would call the bench cut. And then, cause that's what's always on my bench is that three to one. And um, then you can dilute it um, later on if you need to. If I'm mixing in here, you know, you can just take that same formula. You could do two to six, three to, three to one, I mean, yeah, three to one, six to two, you know, whatever, how you wanna do it. So I mix it in here, I usually double it. Um, so I'd put two ounces of my resin and then put six ounces of my alcohol um, and weigh it out by weight. This is all by weight, um, which is why I'm showing that. So 
to speed it up, you start with the, with the uh, coffee grinder, weigh it out, put it in here. And then from there, if you really wanna take things to the next level, then you use a magnetic mixer like this. Again, I think this is linked. Um, this just has a little magnetic motor that spins around under there. And then you use one of these little pieces so you can take one of these and you drop this down inside your shellac, like this, and you can, you can kind of see that that thing's sticking to the bottom, hopefully. And so when I turn this thing on and that starts spinning around, it's gonna mix up that shellac and it really, really makes, it's so much better. This is like an amazing addition to the shellac mixing process. It's so much faster, just does a way better job of dissolving it for you. So it can be ready in a few hours between the coffee grinder and this, you can get it ready really fast. Um, so that's um, a little more about the mixing. Oh, and then the other thing I wanna mention is the one pound cut. So I told you how to make the bench cut, <clears throat> right? But we gotta talk about the one pound cut, which is what you use for the sealer. So you don't wanna take your bench cut, especially when you're using a strong color like this and put it right into the wood because it's just too much color and it's, gonna, it's not gonna be very even. So it's much better to take this dilute it to make your sealer coat and then that's what you use for your initial coats i usually do i don't know uh, two or three just to kind of build a good solid foundation there and then i'm going to come on with my actual body and coats so the way you do it is ultra simple no measuring see i got to keep this in a way that i can do it easily while i'm working and not have to calculate anything or whatever so i got my three to one bench cut in here let's say um or let's say I, this is my three to one bench cut it literally is uh, so I wanna make some sealer for this to seal, seal the bare wood. So what I do is you just literally cut it in half. You fill this halfway up with your three to one mixture. You fill it the rest of the way up with your alcohol and you're good to go. That's your sealer. It's very simple, right? So you got your three to one, then you just cut that in half with alcohol to make your uh, sealer coat and you're good to go. So that's some background on the shellac itself little bit about the glassware, the mixing process, the tools, the oil, and how to make the three to one cut, and also the sealer cut. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to go even deeper and learn even more about my French polishing process and my systems and techniques and all the nuance and uh, artistic approach that goes into it. I do have an online course called The Art of French Polishing. It's part of the Luthier's Edge online guitar making school. I'll put all the information below if you wanna check that out and learn more. Also, if you haven't downloaded the Shellac Handbook, it's totally free. It's a PDF you can download, and it just has an organized, easy, quick access version of the information from this video and the previous videos in this series. So look below for that as well if you haven't downloaded that yet. That's all for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.